All right, so today's topic, as you can tell, is going to be the importance of resetting your technique and making sure that is as consistent as possible. This is definitely going to be a recurring theme on the channel, so I'm not going to worry about covering absolutely everything. Feel free to ask as many questions as you have on this topic because I'm probably going to make dozens of videos on them over the next months and years. So yeah, I guess before we get into it, um, I got a new flannel today that came in, so definitely pumped, feeling good. Yeah, I'm just feeling ready to help and make a video today. So first point that I have here is I just want to review my method of training. So in general, if you've been watching my channel, um, not that I have a ton of videos out, I probably have like 20 or something, but my process of training and my overall training philosophy is going to be putting a huge emphasis on hypertrophy lifts, whether it's a compound or isolation or free weight or a cable or machine. I'm doing what's best for me, what's best on stimulus to fatigue ratio. I think you should do the same thing for yourself. And my goal is very slow but consistent progression. I don't worry about the day-to-day -day progressions. Those will go up and those will go down. They'll fluctuate based on outside factors and just how you're feeling that day. But over look, looking at the longer period of time over the months and years, if I am trending in the right direction, that's a clear clear sign that my muscles are growing, whether, um, whether it's my measurements or my training um, overall volume and tonnage going up. That's what I'm focused on. So hypertrophy-focused lifts slowly get stronger at them over time. That is my method of training, if you're not familiar with it. But if you've been uh, watching my channel, you probably are. So hypertrophy lifts and isolations can be more inconsistent than compound lifts. So this generally just comes down to more of like, it's kind of like a popularity test. So you have something like the squat, something like the bench or the deadlift. These are all very measurable lifts. Like obviously on the deadlift, you go from the weight is on the floor to the weight is locked out and you're standing up tall. Bench, you touch your chest to your elbows are locked. Squat, you stand up tall, your hips go below parallel, below your knees, and then you come right back up. Like they're all very measurable, um, very universally measurable lifts. Not every lift is like that. Take like a lat pull down, for example. Like how far down are you supposed to go? Do you have to lock out? Stuff like this. Like it's not, there's a little bit more nuance to the measurements on these lifts. And that's why having good technique is important. Technique's obviously going to vary from person to person just based on leverages and um, overall the individual biomechanics of the person. But having a baseline consistent technique and form that you have on each lift is going to be important. So the point I'm trying to get at here is it doesn't have to be the same from person to person. As long as you're confident in your, in your technique that works, you have to keep it pretty consistent over time. The problem with this is it's easy to start to move away from that consistency and build some bad habits because we all have some type of ego to us and we want to start to cheat on our form. That's why strength on these lifts that aren't quite as universally measurable isn't talked about that much. But it's super important, at least in my opinion, because this is my method of training and my overall philosophy on how to make muscular gains, which is what this channel is about. So I have a solution and I'm going to present it to you throughout this video. So we need systems and methods to make adjustments in our training. So we need to have some type of measurement, some type of unit of measurement to know if we actually have to reset our form. There's a few different ways to do this. It's the first one is a simple one. Film your lifts. Take a video. I'd say once a month, that should be not too often, not too little, and compare and contrast video to video. You can play them side by side. There's a bunch of different ways to do that. Make sure the range of motion is similar. Make sure the speed is similar. The overall technique, make sure you're not arching more now than you were before on like a bench or something like that. Obviously, it varies lift to lift, but make sure there's a lot of consistency and the lifts generally tend to mirror each other quite a bit. That's a very simple method when it comes to ensuring consistency. Another way is just kind of based on feel. Like, do you feel like you're cheating more? Do you feel like you had strict form and now you're cheating? This isn't quite as certain of a way, but I don't know how practical it is to film every single lift every month. So using this for certain lifts and using the film for lifts that you take more seriously or lifts that just have more variation when it comes to form and a little bit more inconsistency Using a couple of these tools will help you out a ton. So for hypertrophy, 
which is what we're all training for, I'm assuming if you're watching this channel, it is typically better to focus on technique than it is to focus on progression. If you focus on progression, that is where you start to steal from other areas of training. And this is how powerlifters train. This is how strength athletes train. You have to make sacrifices where you can in order to improve your overall production and in order to improve the numbers that you produce when it comes to your lifts. With bodybuilding, the number that you're lifting doesn't actually matter as long as it's slowly going up over time in your training. So if I'm a power lifter, it makes no sense for me to keep like a moderate arch with good technique for hypertrophy when I could just do this a little bit more and add 40 pounds to my bench. You know what I mean? So I'm sacrificing something in order to be stronger. I'm not actually stronger, but it gives me a better advantage in the lift. So that's why I'm going to do an arch when I'm competing in a bench press. But when it comes to hypertrophy, if you start to steal from other areas, whether it be your range of motion or your overall technique or your setup, that is where you can't, that's where there's too big of a variable when it comes to your measurements. Because like I used to train, when I plateaued to that 275 bench, I started to train a little bit more like a power lifter. And there's really no way for me to tell us it's like, did I add 50 pounds to that 275 bench because I built muscle? Or did I add 50 pounds to that bench because I started to use leg drive and arch my back and widen my grip and do more of a bounce and kind of drop the eccentric. I could go on forever about all these little powerlifting cues, but that's the importance of overall form consistency. And when I looked at my 2018 max bench video compared to my 2019 max bench video, it was night and day. So there is really no way for me to measure because of that simple variable of me not holding myself accountable when it comes to consistency within my own technique. So let your technique and training fundamentals produce the overload for you. We tend to focus way too much on when am I going to hit that five pounds? When am I going to do it? And we cheat ourselves into that next five pounds. The problem with this, I've already stated, so I'm not going to repeat myself. We start to steal from other areas. I won't say that again. I know I've repeated myself a lot, but I just want you to understand my point. So let your technique and let your fundamentals produce it for you. And when that overload happens, when that progression happens, and when the five pounds need to be added onto the bar, you will have the muscle mass for it. So it's proof. This requires something that not a lot of us have anymore, which is patience. As you get older, patience is, start, is something that you start to understand a lot more, whether it's lifting age or whether it's just your age in life. If you start ego lifting, in trying to add reps and weight all the time, you will start sacrificing your form. So a lot of us tend to chase progression. We have a really hard time with sticking with the same weight and same reps from week to week or workout to workout or whatever. That's why we start to kind of cheat to make us feel like we're making progress. But you have to remember that just because you're not seeing like a number on the reps go up or just because you're not seeing a number on the weight go up doesn't mean you're not progressing because odds are, if you start fresh on two on the first day and you start the exact same freshness on the second day that you train that lift, you're going to be better at it on the second day. But when it comes to overall freshness and like variables that affect your day-to-day -day progressions, the odds of you being at the same energy levels from workout to workout is like that will throw off your training a lot more. And the odds of that actually happening are pretty high. So let's say every training session, this is just going to be random arbitrary numbers. Let's say you get 1% better at each lift when it comes to overall strength from workout to workout. But if you sleep one less hour or eat a little bit off the day before, that has like a 5% variance when it comes to your training numbers. That's going to obviously make more of an, in, more of an impact. So if you get 1% better, but you have 5% worse sleep, your training doesn't necessarily reflect that. And there's really no way to measure that. So that's why we measure it over the long run, not the short term. So to use my method properly, again, which is slow progressive overload on these hypertrophy lifts, allowing our muscle growth to do the work and apply that overload, we need to focus on two main things. The first one's gonna be developing and refining your technique standards. That's understanding what technique and what form are best for you 
standardizing that and getting as good as that good at that as you possibly can and then making sure you're staying as close to that as you possibly can throughout the rest of your training career obviously there's refining to this that needs to happen so you will start to refine over time once you get to understand your own biomechanics a little bit better but in general we need this to be pretty consistent this is generally going to be your setup your range of motion and your tempo so this allows for consistency and proof of muscle growth. I'm having a hard time talking today. I don't know why. Um, next point I have here is going to be allowing the overload to happen naturally. So this is where you just have to trust the process and refine your training fundamentals as much as possible. And I do have videos on this. So if you don't have um, an idea of what I'm talking about and you don't know what my training fundamentals are, please just watch a few of my other videos. Just there's no ads on them or anything. Just watch them. You'll learn. You'll understand my training methods. This is something that you actually want to apply. And I will have a lot more videos in the future. So uh, stick around. I'll be helping you for as long as I have this channel for. So allow the overload to happen naturally. If you have a good foundation of a program and a good foundation of your training, this overload and this progressive overload will happen over time. It will. So you can't force progression without stealing from other areas of your fundamentals, so don't try to. The effort you put into your training will allow the progression to happen faster. Think long-term and don't be short-sighted in your day-to-day -day performance. If you feel a little bit off one day and you feel like you need to cut the range of motion just a little bit in order to achieve like a PR or get like a couple more reps than you did last time, it's very short-sighted. Like, yeah, you might feel a little bit better because it's like an instant gratification thing. But in the long run, in the long run, you're starting to sacrifice your technique because now next workout, you have to build off of that with bad form. And are, do you think you're going to beat your half range of motion PR with full range of motion? Probably not. And obviously that's an exaggeration, but I just want to get my point across a little bit more clear. So I don't want to overcomplicate this video. That's all I've got for today. So thanks for watching. There will be more coming and let me know if you have any questions.